Carla R. Baker, <laughs> um, the R for her wonderful grandmother's um, memory or name. Mm -hmm. um, so we are excited as a, one of our Athena awardees or nominees. Could you just share a little bit about yourself so people know who you are? Okay. Um, well, my name is Carla R. Baker, and I'm from Lafayette, Louisiana. However, this is my hometown now, Wausau, Wisconsin. I am the general manager over at Jefferson Street Inn, and I must say that this feels more like home than my southern home. Wow, and, and you even enjoy the winter. I love the winter. Okay, so when I moved out here in January, I tell everybody, Wausau is like a Hallmark movie. You have the lights, the, you know, the local uh, stores and coffee shops and everything. So I'm like, yeah, this is it. <laughs> Pretty nice, isn't it? It is. So, you know, we're here today to talk a little bit about you, obviously nominated because uh, oh, no. the Athena Award is, is really about leadership and giving back. Can you share an example of how you've advocated fiercely on behalf of yourself or another female in, in the past? Well, um, it's, that is a very broad question for me because it's my past which had me to advocate now in my present. And let me explain. I was a teen mom. And being a teen mom, you have to go through a lot. You have to give up a lot. And you have to make some very hard decisions very quickly based on one blessed decision. Because we're not going to say it's a bad decision, right? Because I love my, my son. But I realized that at that particular time, being a teen mom, it was really hard because I had to uh, find resources myself to continue to go to high school, uh, finish high school, get into college, and then I actually moved. I moved from Louisiana to go to college in Colorado. And so because of the fact that I had gone through so much adversity and I had gone through so much trauma, I felt like there needed to be someone out there to speak for these young teens who's actually going through it now. And my advocate is to be there for them, help them, guide them, let them know that one mistake isn't going to be the mistake of their lives and build on that. So it would be teen moms. Absolutely wonderful. I go on and on, by the way. So. No, no, that's perfect. It, you know, it's, it's, this has been a wonderful experience to learn so much about the wonderful women we have in this community that each person has their own story, and yes. that story helps create their journey. Yes. So you, you gave an example already of how you acted courageously in your life, right? I think, yes. and that really is the building block. Can you share any other examples where you feel like you've acted courageously on behalf of yourself or someone else? Well, my son, again, had him at a young age. Uh, when I graduated high school, I had to uh, I was accepted in college in Colorado, uh, and now I'm out there, just he and I, um, by ourselves. Uh, one relative, she was coming from Germany in the Army, and she goes, you have to escape Louisiana, which in turn, I felt that way moving out here <laughs> again. But my courage came from him, meaning that my strength came from him, meaning that I knew that he was watching everything that I did. And if I didn't make the right decisions and I didn't, I didn't show him what a great parent is, then he would be the amazing father he is today with his beautiful children and his beautiful wife. And just to have the courage to say, oh no, no I'm about to tear up, I can't believe this. <laughs> Look, just to have the courage at 19 years old to say I'm gonna get on a Greyhound bus with a bag, <laughs> not a suitcase, a bag, and be away from my son for at least eight months so that I can get used to the area. I can, um, you know, didn't have a car, had to walk through the mountains, rain, sleet, or snow to get to school. Get to school. I was more fit than, then than I am now, and then set the, lay down that foundation for him, and then go back and get him and say, okay, God, we're doing this. But you have to have courage to do that. You have to, you have to, you have to see the bigger picture. You have to see where you want to be as opposed to where you're at. And that's a single parent. 
in Colorado Springs, Colorado, going to school, walking, rain, sleet, or snow, people used to pick me up. My classmates, when they realized that I was one of the students, they would be like, what are you doing? Eventually I got a car, which was $700, but we're not gonna go into that. And, um, and then bring him there, get him involved in school. I used to go to school as his parent or parent teacher, and they're like, why did you bring your sister? And he's like, that's my mom. <laughs> what are you talking about? But that took courage to do that. And because of that, it, 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 it strengthens you. And it, it makes you almost feel like, no, it does. It, it made me, to this day, realize that if I can overcome that, like I did, and I have a daughter too, so I can't leave her out in case she's watching this, <laughs> <laughs> but when if I can overcome that for that time period of my life, I can I can overcome anything. And so that's why you hear the passion when it comes to being an advocate for single parents. That's why um, we don't even have enough time for me to share with you the journey that it took me from being that single mom in a little town in Louisiana to being in Wausau, Wisconsin. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that You're with welcome. us. So you, you talk about the courage in yourself and all the things you've had to do, but how, how do you, do you have an example of times you've shared, you know, inspiring other women to um, either be in a leadership position or involved in a project or a cause? Currently, as we speak, there's this young lady, I'm not going to say her name, um, because the ink isn't dry yet, but um, when I first moved here, I, I worked I had to get, uh, excuse me, very familiar with the community and um, with the people that I would be working with, with my constituents or, you know, my uh, uh, the community basically. And uh, there was this one young lady that I started working with very closely. And at that time, she wasn't working for me, but she was working with me. And she went above and beyond. I would be there at 7.30 in the morning. She was in her office at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, it was ski season too, by the way, which I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> um, I would leave at 10.30, 11 o'clock at night. She was right there working alongside with me with these different events and everything. And I'm like, wow, when she, when we're gonna, when she's gonna come and work with me, not for me, because I hate to say that because it takes away the team value. Um, I started telling her, I'm like, so what are your goals? What are your inspirations? Tell me, where do you see yourself? Not in five years. I think five years is a very broad now with where we are with this world. Tell me where you want to see yourself in a year. And she started sharing that with me. So when she actually came to work for me or with us, I started helping her. I started guiding her. I started mentoring her and coaching her. And in less than a year, she went from a manager to a director. And it wasn't easy. People think that just because you see something in someone that they see it in themselves. Sometimes it's your responsibility to help them see the value in themselves because sometimes people that they've been around, they don't let them know how valuable they are out of fear of losing them. But what's the point of having a team around you where you can't look at them and say, they can excel. I know that one day, who knows, may have the position I have or above and beyond. That doesn't threaten me because I see value in people and I try my best to help them and coach them and guide them. And again, the ink isn't dry. <laughs> but she went from a manager to a director. Awesome story. I think it paid so <laughs> I, I also believe that the role of mentors is so important. And, it is. And Every person has that ability to give a person a compliment, um, some of their energy to move forward, and some of the confidence. So thanks for sharing that. You're very welcome. Um, I just want to say this. I went on vacation uh, for a week in Louisiana because of the hurricane, and it wasn't a vacation. <laughs> but I went to check on my family, and when I came back, it's great to know that your presence is missed amongst the people that you manage. Mm -hmm. They were like, "Where? Oh my God, we're so glad you're back. Your light, your energy is so is so amazing." 
And now they are portraying that light. They are portraying that energy. And that's what you want to see when you think of, when I think of the Athena Award, I think of someone who has this huge light and this, this opportunity to not dim anyone's light, but to share that light and help them spark their own. Because sometimes all it takes is a, you know, that little spark. And wow, there it is. Well, here you have a commercial for the Athena. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Uh, you know, I, I think you've shared so much, but can you share any other examples of how you serve our community? Well, when I, I always go back to when I first got here. No one really knew who I was, right? So they would see this, this lady with the curly hair and like, who is she? But no one knew. I would go to different restaurants and have conversations with our youth. And like, hey, how are you? Who are you? Where are you from? What are your goals? Where are you? you know, and they're like, well, who are you? Then I have to tell them, it's like, <laughs> are, are you betting me? But um, because of that, we were able to get hire, not get, hire so many employees. And one in particular, um, this young lady who works for me, and I always resort back to, to the team that we have mm -hmm. now. She's young, and her paychecks are very nice. I don't know if I should say that or not, but it is. But she was catching a cab every day. And every day she was working three to 11, and I'm like, I know what you make. Why are you catching a cab? So long story short, uh, I started mentoring her and uh, without getting too involved because there's a line, you know, there's a line. But I showed her the value in her, showed her the value in her money. Uh, asked her, why aren't you in school? Case in point, what we talked about when we, when we, before we started the interview. Mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to go into school, you're only 18 years old. You don't have any kids or anything. This can't be it. Although I'm very grateful for you being here, but this can't be it. So because of me telling it to her, she brought four of her other friends to me. And she goes, Miss Car, well, they don't call me Miss Carla out here, which is weird, but <laughs> um, she goes, Carla, can you help them like you helped me? And I was flattered. And nine out of 10 times I'm in my office and I'm like, wait, what? My boss was like, what? And I'm like, oh my God, yeah, of course I help you. So I went from helping her, young lady locally, who just watched me and was like, Thanks for asking. She told me, thank you for asking me. No one has ever asked me those questions or cared about even what I did past my nine to five. And she brought three other friends. Yeah, I'll help you. So you may be getting some enrollment too. <laughs> <laughs> well, any great experience and mentor for um, our students is really what we're looking for. So Carla, as we get to the end of today, is there anything else you wanted to share? Um, honestly, I, I just would like to say thank you so much. Thank WASA, the Wisconsin community, so much for considering me and having me as a finalist. Honestly, I just do what I feel like needs to get done. And I don't know if it's just because of the fact that how I was raised and what I went through, but uh, you know that led me up to this point. But I'm my door is always open. My heart is always open. Um, my knee is always open to the community. And being that the community received me so well, it was easier for me to get to where I'm at. I was like the Athena. to really take it in because I've never stopped being involved in the community. I've never stopped being the GM over at Jefferson Street Inn. But sitting here now, I'm really fighting back tears. Um, but I just want to say thank you guys. You guys believed in me. And that goes a long way. Thank you. Well, don't stop. And we want to say thank you for shedding your light on all of us. Oh, because you're welcome. That's an important thing. So thank you everyone for watching today. Absolutely.
Uh, Carla, Chris, thank you so much for, uh, for doing this interview. And um, we will have three more through the rest of the afternoon. Uh, if you're out there watching, thanks for uh, tuning in.